Hi guys. Here we go, another Devos. Sure do love doing these with you. So we're going to be in Galatians chapter 6 still, but moving down to verse 6. And it says this. Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Now, I've heard preachers use this next session of this passage as a tithe message. And you know, I believe that a scripture taken out of context is misinterpreted. Um, taken out of context is a pretext. And, and, and so um, it goes on and says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. Yeah, I've heard that used as a, a, a tithe message. And it's always kind of bothered me because I don't, I don't think that Paul's talking about um, tithing at all. I think he's talking about human to human, heart to heart, Christian to Christian. For whatever a man sows that he will reap. Because it starts with, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. And you know why I believe that is? You know, Shakespeare said, and I'm not looking for sympathy here, I really am not, because I love my job. But Shakespeare said, heavy is the head that wears the crown. You know, Pastor Don and Pastor Ben and Pastor Dave and myself, but really if the truth will be known, mainly me and, and Pastor Don are responsible for the welfare and the love and the maintenance and the teaching of a lot of people. A lot of people with problems. And that's a privilege and an honor to be able to have that position given to us by God. Why? Because he trusts us. With me, I'm not so sure it's they trust me, but he knows that I love people. And he knows that there's not much I haven't experienced in the way of pain. And believe it or not, that's true of Dawn. You know, she's been through some stuff. Not like us, she's never been high. But she's never left, ha had the consequences of the kind of lifestyles that some of us have led. But she's had her hard times. And I think that the reason isn't so much that God trusts us, it, it, because we all fall sin and fall short, fall, fall short of the glory of God and sin. And I think the reason is because of the level of empathy and compassion and love that He's gifted us with. So when it says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches, because sometimes... As a pastor, it gets a little lonely and you feel a little bit beat down. Like when you're pouring into somebody month after month and they disagree with something you said and they take to the Instagram or, and they start bashing you and you're like, oh, wow, ow, ouch, ouch, ouch. And the truth is, they can come back a year later and say, I'm sorry, I'm like, door's always open for you, bro, you know that. It takes a special heart to do what we do. <laughs> Somebody told me the other day, isn't it like herding cats on meth? <laughs> it kind of is. It kind of is, especially when a little gossip pops up over here and then you hear it one way over here and then you hear it a completely different way over there and you hear it a completely different way over there. And, uh, but he goes on, he says, Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And you know what? We reap great joy. And I guess this, this Debo is just a little bit of the pastor sharing his heart. Um, we reap great joy because of the love that you guys, in all our humanness and in all our frailties and in all our failures, 
the love that you guys display for the leadership of this church is phenomenal. Phenomenal. So when it's talking about sharing in all good things with him who teaches, you do. You do share in all good things. But we have an enemy. The devil roaming to and fro throughout the earth seeking whom he may devour. Like a lion. And we have the biggest target on our backs. Because if God can take out the pastors, then the entire flock will be homeless. And not only that, if he can take out the leadership through sin, then everybody feels betrayed. So it behooves the devil to try to take us out as vigilantly as possible. And he says, for he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. And I've got to tell you the truth. that My own personal devotions, my own personal Bible study is a huge defense. A huge defense against me stumbling. With David and Ben and with my wife, it's the same thing. Our own personal relationship with Christ is a huge defense against falling into sin, against walking after the flesh and not after the spirit. But so are you. I think about you and pray for you and I get filled with gratitude and when I'm in my pulpit on Sunday morning and I look out and I see nodding heads or, or you guys laugh at one of my stupid jokes, that might be the greatest thing keeping me from falling. I don't mean any disrespect to the Holy Spirit when I say that, but your love. Your love is a huge deterrent from my failure. That I don't fail largely because of what you do for me, standing up for me, supporting me, us, the leadership. So it goes on and says, He who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And it says, that, and this is where you guys are rock stars. Oh. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. You know, there's been some issues with a little gossip here and there in this church. There's been some issues with a little, uh, you know, some sin here and there. And, and oh my gosh, gee, shame on us for being human, right? But because the doors are always open for repentance, and because we all recognize our own frailties and our propensity to fail, this is a generous church, a welcoming church. Welcome to the returning knucklehead. <laughs> the door's always open here and always will be. Do you know? Do you know how good we've got it? There's only one boss here. Jesus Christ, the Son of God. King of kings and Lord of lords. Creator of the universe and everything in it. He's the boss. You know, uh, uh, originally the word pastor um, was translated as servant. Servant. 
not mighty ruler or a guy who deserves all the praise or any of that crud. No. And I am your servant. And Dawn is your servant. And Dave is your servant. And Ben is your servant. And Miss Anna is your servant. Now, don't come trying to boss us around or anything. I'm kidding, of course. But we all love you so much. And when it says, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. I'm not looking for you to take me out to dinner. I'm not looking for you to buy me a new set of wheels for my bike. I'm not looking for you to wash my car. I'm looking for you to share your love. And the good things that I hope that you share with me are your heart, your mind, your strength when I need it, your transparency to tell me what you really feel and to feel free to know that you can come to us at any time. And if I ever fail to say good morning or I don't get with you right after service because I got a bunch of people. Please tell me. Pastor Pete, I needed you and you weren't there. And I will do my best to fix that. Love you guys very much. Gotta go. See you tomorrow. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.